when I grow up, I want to wield the power of online homework platforms. Just imagine, anyone could tell you anything, and you hit them with the red X. Brr, incorrect. Mario Kart World costs $80. Err, wrong. It's $5. Do you want to tip the self-checkout kiosk? Incorrect. The correct prompt is, do you want the self-checkout kiosk to tip you? I suppose for now, we'll just have to keep dreaming. But the other day, on r slash ask math, LA drivers suck was subjected to this omnipotent force. He's helping his third grader study for a math test, and he can't figure out how this question says the answer should be 6-2. He asks, am I completely missing this, or is their online homework flat out wrong? Let's take a look at the question statement. It says, for every column of objects in an array, there are three rows. The total number of objects in the array is 12. How many rows and columns does the array have? OP's answer of three rows and four columns seems pretty obviously correct. The question specifies that every column has three rows. All right, well, if there are three rows and 12 entries total, then obviously there need to be four columns. So that three times four, the total number of entries is 12. But if that answer is wrong, well, let's just double check the definition of array to make sure we understand. Everybody get out your mathematics dictionary and let's see. Array from statistics, an arrangement of a series of items according to values of the items, usually from largest to smallest. Uh, you know what? <sighs> mm, I can tell just by the smell of this thing that the book has got to be from like, yep, 1966. Why don't we try try a more modern mathematics dictionary. Yeah, okay, an array, an ordered collection of elements, usually numbers, and then a one-dimensional, a matrix is an example of a two-dimensional array. So yeah, I think for our purposes, an array is just a rectangle filled with numbers or other things. And one of these rectangular arrays is made up of rows and columns. The problem says there are three rows, just like this. Every column here has three rows. And you want to tell me that three rows is incorrect? What has this cold world come to? Well, of course, it's our old friend, vague and easily misinterpreted problem specifications. The wording of this problem is just a bit unfortunate. Let's say that me, you, our friend Dina, and our friends Paul, Leonard, and Emma are all going sledding. And we all need a pair of gloves so that our fingers don't freeze. We might check our bag and make sure that for each person there are two gloves. This means there should be 12 gloves total, because each person needs their own pair. My pair of gloves can't also be Dina's pair of gloves, right? Dina needs her very own pair. There's no way we're messing with Dina and trying to take turns using her gloves. If we don't even know how many people there are, if we just say for each person there are two gloves and there are 12 gloves total, then obviously there has to be six people. The big difference in the array situation is that in an array, each row spans across all of the columns. We understand it's necessary to have 12 gloves if there are six people, because gloves don't stretch across multiple hands. But for there to be three rows for each column, we only need three rows. Each row is part of every single column. Yet, the problem expects us to understand the array situation in the same way we would understand the glove situation, even though rows extend across columns and gloves don't extend across people. When we see the phrase, for every column of objects in an array, there are three rows, that doesn't mean that each column is composed of three rows, no, no, no. It means that the number of rows is three times the number of columns. Having had our foolish perspectives fixed, we know that the number of columns, n, must satisfy the equation 3n times n equals 12. This 3n, of course, is the number of rows, n is the number of columns, and their product must be the number of objects in the array, which is 12. 
Of course, we can't have negative numbers of columns, so this equation immediately implies that n is equal to 2, and so the number of rows is 6. Of course, this question sparked many disagreements. Many people sided with the OP, thinking that his understanding was perfectly natural and that the question's wording was poor and misleading. To defend the OP, Jumpman Zero uses the classic Canadian Parliament analogy. You could say, for every Canadian, there is a member of parliament that represents them, and using the same logic that the question enforces, you could conclude there must be 27 million people in parliament. But of course, just as rows extend across columns, a member of parliament represents multiple people from the Canadian populace. He says if you thought that was the right answer, that there must be 27 million people in parliament, that would betray a lack of understanding of the subject. And similarly, if you don't think of columns as sharing rows as an array, he thinks that betrays a poor understanding of how an array works. So the argument here is that the wording is specifically bad for this type of question concerning arrays. Again, if it was something like for every person there are two gloves, we'd understand exactly what is meant. But in the array situation, with this being rows and columns, things are definitely a little easier to confuse. Kara Puppers also supported the OP, saying that it appears every post agreeing with the 6-2 correct answer from the homework platform is dropping the word array from their rationale. She says if every column in a 2D array has three rows, you need four columns to hold 12 objects as we went through. Of course, not everybody agreed with OP. Others thought that the OP, as well as many of the other denizens of the thread, were fairly numbskulled nincompoops. Odd Breakfast said, I honestly have no idea why so many replies seem to agree the wording is bad. It's very clear. Each column has three rows, so no matter what the amount of rows will be three times as much as the columns. Good lord, folks. And Get to Ellie says it's about definitions. An array has columns and rows. A column does not have rows. A row does not have columns. A column or row contains elements or objects. So when the question asks, for every column there are three rows and there are 12 objects, how many rows and columns are there? They are saying there are three times as many rows as there are columns. I understand what he's saying, but personally I think this is a pretty weak semantic argument. Here I'm going to do an impression of get to Ellie pointing at a dot on an array and having someone else ask him questions to determine which dot he's pointing at, okay? I'm pointing at a dot in the array. Well, which column of the array is it? It's the third column. And which row of that column? What? But what do you think? Was the OP a bit silly here to not understand what's going on? Or does the problem author deserve to be chastised? Bad problem author. Bad! In any event, when you're in the midst of the arrays unit in third grade math, just be careful about- wait. The arrays unit? In third grade? Why do third graders need to know about arrays? To people who have spent much time studying matrices, the thought of an array in third grade math may seem highly inappropriate. But OP explained the students are actually using arrays as a way to represent multiplication problems. Many of us may be used to the old reliable memorize the 12 by 12 multiplication table and this is pretty useful but it certainly doesn't develop much number sense. By conceiving of multiplication as an array of objects, a student can naturally see many important properties of numbers and multiplication. One important property is that order of multiplication doesn't matter. Although students might be expected to conceive of two times three and three times two differently, with arrays, it's easy to see that the products are equal. By looking exclusively at the rows or at the columns, Columns, it's easy to see how multiplication is repeated addition, or to see the connection to division. And by splitting an array in two, though not necessarily in half, a student can see how three times five is the same as three times two plus three times three, for example, which is a big step towards a distributive property, which is indeed part of third grade math standards. In fact, looking at these common core third grade math standards, the word array shows up 12 times. Wow, third grade math, more like third grade arrays. You know, one of the other interesting facets of this problem is how students should be familiar with arrays because they're used to represent multiplication. 
But the crux of this array-based problem is a multiplication different from that which the array in question represents. The crux of the problem is three times what number will produce a pair of numbers whose product is 12. Really the key information from the problem is this multiplication by three. But the relevant array is just six times two and doesn't really have anything to do with multiplication by three. I wouldn't be surprised if many of the third graders who understood the question correctly still found it a little bit tricky. I think the merits of arrays as models for representation are clear. We already looked at some of the properties they make easy to behold, you can also connect it to factoring and prime numbers, how a composite number will have a pair of factors greater than one, and so can be represented as a rectangle, but a prime number doesn't have a pair of factors greater than one, and so can only be represented as a line. On the other hand, I'm no expert in elementary math education, so these sorts of problems always have me hitting the books. And in the book Elementary and Middle School Mathematics Teaching Developmentally, Arrays show up constantly as a method for representing multiplication. However, they actually discourage using array multiplication in homework exercises because parents should be able to help their children with their homework, so they discourage the use of techniques parents are likely to be unfamiliar with. I understand the spirit of that advice, but using arrays to represent multiplication seems so intuitive and obvious that it hurts to imagine this being being an incomprehensible model for many parents. But it's a decent rule in general to be wary of giving young kids a bunch of homework their parents can't help them with, so don't send your students home with a dozen galley division problems, for example. Whether the parents know about arrays or not, I think it's great for students to conceptualize numbers using dots and arrays. This opens the door to things like square numbers, triangular numbers, and oblong numbers. But what about you? Did you learn about multiplication using arrays in school? And just how badly should the author of this problem be chastised? Or should he be celebrated? I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsought the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this timing might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm straight and hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.